um, a dream, for instance. Dreams are made of alpha elements, according to Bion, right? Alpha elements are fit to be put together in the form of a dream. It doesn't have to be intellectual thinking, and intellectual thinking is not necessarily made of alpha elements, so it may, right? But alpha elements have that property. Now, raw stimuli are only experienced precisely because there is no alpha function and the personality cannot make them meaningful, accrue in the personality in the form of tension, right? More tension, an increasing tension, right? Um, Would you say that all over again, the first part? I didn't yes. Um, Beta elements, by beta. definition, or raw stimuli, which is what beta elements stand for, be it coming from the inside in the form of raw emotions, right, or from the outside in the form of whatever stimuli there is to have, right, presence of the mother, presence of the father, mother walking away, a baby coming to the family, right, <coughs> for as long as that it's not undergoing the, uh, the function, the alpha function, which is the function of making meaning of the stimuli. The raw stimuli only accrue within the personality until they become intolerable. Until? They become intolerable. Right, you feel the personality feels disturbed by the intensity, by an intensity of stimuli that the personality cannot make any meaning for and therefore cannot be thought of. Right? Um, but that doesn't follow. I mean, you can think of something and fail to make meaning, yes. which, which doesn't necessarily have to reflect a failure of thought or even a breakdown in thought, but the thinking process can be intact and in place, but you can fail to, I don't know, negotiate, digest, transform, uh, reach a state of less anxiety or tension? Well, I in that case, that particular process of thinking has failed. It has not taken place for whatever reason. I think that thinking, the words are felt to be things in themselves and not things that reflect a meaning. One can be thinking but not making meaning. It's, it's almost like the words are things, concrete Th things. That could be one possibility, but let us, I, I'm just thinking as I heard you say what you said, right? Let us think of a traumatic event. Right. And when I say traumatic event, I don't mean something unfortunate that happens to you. Not everything that is unpleasurable is traumatic, though it may be pretty horrible. But traumatic, by definition, is um, um, a, a sudden invasion of the psyche of a stimuli that, because of its intensity and suddenness, catches the mental apparatus unprepared, and the upper mental apparatus cannot make any meaning at all, right? Um, an example, for instance, the uh, post-traumatic stress disorder of the soldiers, right, that come back from Afghanistan, Iraq, or wherever they were, um, those are traumatic events. <laughs> it's not that that's just unpleasurable, they didn't like being in the war, but if they suddenly see, let's say, uh, a, a car going fire and all their um, fellow soldiers dying, they weren't prepared for that. Maybe intellectually they were, someone told them, and of course who doesn't know you go to war, people die. But that's different from being in the experience of the tank being blown up and everybody dying. Mm -hmm. That catches you unprepared. That becomes then unthinkable, right? It, there's no alpha function that can deal with that. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the event can't be digested, can't be dreamt of, can't be thought through. You couldn't write a poem after that about soldiers dying in the war. Uh, if you could, it wouldn't be a post-traumatic, because that would have been traumatic, right? But initially, what happens to you? You just 
live in the trauma and you repeat the trauma. You go to sleep and you dream with people dying and buildings blowing up, right? Or you take a gun and you do to others what's been done to you and you don't, you can't measure the consequences because you can't think of what's happening. You're just repeating the event passively or actively. You dream it passively or you do it to others actively, right? And you, you can't make anything other happen. That would be, you see, a problem with alpha function due to some over-intense stimuli that gets you, catches you unprepared. It's not because of envy, though if envy is a factor in your personality, you could be hindered by something very mild and very nice, right? I mean, you were single all your life, and here suddenly your Prince Charming appears, and you were psychotic. <laughs> Right? Yes. You say, how so? You have been dreaming with that, you wanted that to happen, now it's happening, you can't bear it. Well, if envy is a factor in your personality, that could really spoil that very same object or experience that you have desired all your life. You could live for as sane, so to speak, for as long as the object wasn't there. When the object appears, you can't bear it, you go crazy. Mm -hmm. You see? So these are just two extreme examples mm -hmm. of, in one case, the environment, in the other case, a factor of the personality causing the breakdown of the alpha function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Robert, you, you said like, that traumatic events are a sudden invasion of an intense stimuli about which the psyche cannot make sense of the event, becomes unthinkable, and can't be dreamt of. Right. And then, did, did I miss, did you say then, like, a, a soldier coming back from war with PTSD? Yes. That he just keeps dreaming of it over and over again? So yes. So he's dreaming of it then. Well, and not he, really. He's not making a dream in uh, what we would call a dream. He is really, when he goes to sleep... Just the beta elements keep... Exactly. Being the same over thing, over, just untransformed. Yeah. Mm. Keeps okay. repeating itself. A dream implies a transformation. And that's the flashbacks that people The flashbacks, have exactly. PTSD, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you, you, a psychotic uh, patient may hallucinate during sleep, but hallucinating during sleep is not the same as dreaming. Mm. You see? And having traumatic flashbacks while you are asleep is also not the same as dreaming. Mm -hmm. Why? And we are going to talk about that now, because dreaming implies, in the first phase, an apparatus that is able to hold something unconscious and something conscious, mm -hmm. is able to repress and to selectively allow something to emerge into consciousness, but transformed, not in the same way, right? And we all if Freud is correct, uh, have had our Oedipal longings, right? We wanted to have intercourse with our mothers or fathers, but typically that is repressed. It's not conscious. It's not that you would become a teenager and say to your mother, I want to go to bed with you. It exists, the longing, but it's repressed. How it does emerge in consciousness in a transformed way such that it is acceptable to the personality because it's now in the guise of something else, what we call a displacement. And now it comes back, for instance, in the form of looking for a nice girlfriend with whom he could do what, as a child of two or three years, he wanted to do but couldn't do with mother, right? That transformation is part of the alpha function. That is, that what returns has been transformed. Mm. How, did, how did the transformation happen due to alpha function? You said alpha function is a digestion. Well, digestion is a transformation. Mm -hmm. Right? You eat something, mm -hmm. then you digest it. As you digest it, the food you ingest it becomes something different mm -hmm. from what it looked like when you took it in. Mm -hmm. Right? Some of it will stay and will become part of your body or of your personality, if you wish. Some other part of what you ingested, 
your body has decided that this is useless, it's no good for anything, you just eliminate it through feces or urine, it just goes away, mm -hmm. right? Now the mental apparatus does the same operation. Now that construction or that function in the personality that creates a separation between what is to be available for consciousness and what has to go under, Bion calls that, what does he call it? Contact the contact, contact barrier. barrier. The contact barrier. That contact barrier is due to alpha function. It has, that to, is be built. It has to be built. It has to be built. And it is built with the alpha elements mm -hmm. that create like a skin mm -hmm. in the psyche or in the mental apparatus or in the mind. If you remember that these are all symptoms for our usage at least. That allow that something is being separated from something, consciousness being separated from unconscious, so that something can be stored there without bothering you in your unconscious, and can be selectively um, available to consciousness, but not in the same way that it was stored in the unconscious. The example I gave of the Oedipal conflict and the outcome of the Oedipal conflict, I think, is mm. an evidence of what I'm trying to, to describe, right? Now, um, dreaming is in itself part of that skin, that selective membrane that separates consciousness from unconscious. And how so? If you observe a dream and as a therapist you analyze the dream, you analyze the dream because you assume that there is some meaning in the dream that the dream is not overtly showing, right? You have a sense that there is something that the dream is on the one side showing, but also at the same time something that the dream is concealing. And when we say we want to analyze the dream, we mean we want to understand the unconscious meaning of the dream. What Freud called the manifest and the latent aspects. Of exactly. The, the manifest and the latent aspect. Now, the latent aspect of the dream, Bion understands as coming from the fact that the dream has one face turned towards the unconscious, right? That is the, imagine a skin, if you say our skin, well, one face of our skin is in contact with the external world, right, with our environment. The other face of our skin is inside, is surrounding our body, is in contact with our subcutaneous tissue or muscles and so on and so forth. So the contact barrier, one side of which, of which is <coughs> showing or looking at the outside world, I had a dream, I am able to tell the dream, right? I know about the dream and I can share it with someone, me, but I can only share that that is visible. I can only talk about that side of the dream that is turned towards consciousness. But dreams, if they have a latent conte content, as Bill was saying, it is because the other side of the face of the dream is turned towards the unconscious, right? In that sense, the dream is the skin that separates the unconscious from consciousness mm -hmm but in some way also brings consciousness and unconscious in touch. That's why contact barrier, which in itself is an oxymoron, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's contact, how can it be a barrier? Yeah, and if it's a barrier, 